Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading an SCP called SCP-610, also known as the Flush That Hates. This SCP was suggested by Jessica. Thank you, Jessica, for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And if anybody else has any suggestions for SCPs or creepypastas you would like me to read, let me know in the comments down below. If I read your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So again, thank you Jessica for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. Due to the vast area of infection, SCP-610 covers containment is impossible. Isolation of the area has proven far more effective and permission has been granted by the Russian government to establish a perimeter to keep people out of these areas under the guise of military operation. Should any organism displaying traits consistent with SCP-10 be sighted near the perimeter, then the established protocol requires it be engaged at range with small arms then dispatch it with incendiary weapons and munitions from as great a distance as possible. Any living thing coming into physical contact with an organism infected with SCP-610 is considered expendable and is to be immediately terminated and incinerated. Any person coming within 3 meters of SCP-610 infected life are to be immediately withdrawn from the area, be isolated for the rest of their team, and subjected to medical examinations using only remote techniques to determine if infection has occurred and appropriate steps taken based on that determination. At the present, the known infection vectors for SCP-10's spread seem to be focused on physical contact. Drone movements within heavily infected areas have returned air samples containing minute particles which, when exposed to organic compounds, will result in the spread of SCP-610. The results of these particular tests have revealed that most require several days to manifest, if at all, with the exception of direct contact with exposed lung and liver tissue. These particular tests show a rapid rate of growth which require incineration of the testing environment no more than 24 hours after initial exposure, with even a 2 hour mishap risking a compromise facility event. Given that this kind of rapid growth only occurs in organic material existing outside the human body, this form of infection is currently considered a minor concern. These peculiarities have given rise to a serious questions regarding the possible origin of the infection in conjunction with the failed <laughs> containment protocol remains at a scorched earth policy at this time and no concern for transmission via water or air at infection parameters exists bearing situational changes in the field. Initial reports of SCP-610 came directly from the Russian government through undisclosable channels. These reports consisted primarily of disappearances of farmers in the region and were not considered until the local police followed by regional police and finally a government dispatched agent all failed to report in within a 72 hour period. A small military contingent was dispatched to the area and quickly withdrew at which point the foundation was contacted to investigate. The area SCP-610 affects is close to Lake Baikal in southern Siberia. Areas of infection are marked on the map provided to us here. Containment parameters are marked in blue surrounding these infection areas and 
As of present, no further locations have been identified. Incursions into the parameter must be reported prior to conducting, confirm it during exploration, and debrief it on immediately following return. SCP-610 appears to be a contagious skin disease at first, with symptoms including rash, itching, and increased skin sensitivity. Within 3 hours, the disease will cause blemishes resembling heavy scar tissue to form in the chest and arm area, spreading to the leg and back within an additional hour, consuming the victim completely within 5 hours. Exposure to higher temperatures vastly decreases the time for the contagion to spread and complete infection has been recorded occurring in as little as 5 minutes. After the completion of the infection occurs, the victim's life functions will cease for approximately 3 minutes after which they will restart at 2 to 3 times the activity rate of a normal human. Following this, the scar tissue on the victim will start to move on its own accord and grow at a rapid rate. Normal human features start to disappear at this point under the infection and the path of mutations appears to be largely random. Subjects observed in this stage of infection have been recorded as growing three or more limbs of a type such as arms or legs. The head may become misshapen and elongated or widen out and parts of the subject may split open from which additional branches of flesh will grow. The duration of this stage of infection is unknown and not all subjects appear to progress to the later stages. Under unknown conditions, an infected individual will cease moving and place itself in a location it deems suitable where it roots itself. The fleshy growth on the victim will then begin to spread itself across all surrounding objects and consume them. Such objects do not spread the infection as living creatures do, however, and the effects of prolonged contact with these objects is recorded later in this document. It is assumed that this behavior is to create an area hospitable to continue growth of the other infected. Observation of life infected by SCP-610 by staff is impossible. Those infected with the disease immediately seek out aid as natural human impulses resulting in unintended infections. Those infected past the scar tissue phase actively and aggressively attempt to infect anyone approaching them within an undefined area. It has been established that should an infected be capable of sight and observe an uninfected, it will proceed towards them. If the infected has lost the ability of sight, a range of approximately 30 meters is considered safe. Observation of SCP-610 Infected settlements have been established using artificial methods such as remote robots. The data returned from these observations coupled with the openly aggressive nature of the infected to attempt to spread SCP-610 has resulted in the Keter classification. However, so long as nothing is allowed to enter or leave the infected areas, it is considered a neutralized threat. Of concern are the cavernous areas beneath the infected settlements that were discovered during the exploration and attempts to get research personnel into these areas are underway.